Hello there, it's time for Crossroads Chronicles today. Uh, Pastor Curtis here with Jason and Carrie. Uh, today our topic is heroes. Uh, if you're a sports fan, you know that on the ESPN, they had a 10 part series called The Last Dance. And The Last Dance was basically about the 1990 Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. And I remember being young and growing up and, and Michael Jordan, and he was my hero. But I'll just tell you, the more I learned about Michael Jordan and watching that series, uh, you know, the kind of person he was, he was a great, I consider him the greatest basketball player of all time, maybe one of the greatest winners in sports of all time. Uh, but just a lot uh, left to be desired in his character and the way, uh, you know, he lived his life. Uh, but today we want to talk about, you know, our heroes and, uh, so, you know, as I get older and, and, you know, spend more time in Scripture, you know, my heroes have changed. But I just have a verse uh, that I want to read you. It comes out of Psalms chapter 37, verse 30 and 31. It says, The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. You know, when I read that verse, and it's talking about people <clears throat> whose uh, God's law is always on their heart. When they speak, they're always speaking uh, wisdom and godly things. You know, I'm reminded of two men uh, just who have a huge impact on my life and who I look at and say, you know what, I want to be like those guys. And that's uh, uh, Dennis Wells and uh, Mr. Osborne, Todd Osborne. You know, when you're around those guys, <clears throat> the conversation is always about God it's always about scripture. It's always about uplifting other people. And so when I see men like that, you know, that's the kind of uh, men that I want to emulate. Uh, I want to be more like them. And I look at them and I say, you know what, we need more men like those two men. And I know a lot of other guys in the church that I get to hang around with that are like that. But those two guys just come to mind. And men like that, they're the real heroes in our community and in our families. And uh, we just need more men like that in the world. So, Carrie, what do you have today? Well, like you said, when we're growing up, we kind of have a different idea of what a hero is. And as we get older, you know, we can kind of look back and see um, where we need to change our mindset on heroes. And um, when we're trying to figure out where we should aim when it comes to anything, we need to go to the Bible and what the Bible says um, and a couple of verses in Proverbs, tw Proverbs 27, 17 is as iron sharpens iron, so one sharpens another. And then Proverbs 13, 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. So, you know, that's the Bible saying, look, the people that you have to emulate, the people that you want to um, look like need to be people that walk with the Lord. They need to be people that follow God's rules um, and live that kind of life. And so when I think about that kind of person, I would say that probably my greatest hero is my aunt, Peggy Corcoran. Um, I know that you, I've probably mentioned her before. She had a huge impact on my life when it come to you know, the way that I should live my life and my Christian walk. I was very young when I was saved. Um, and that was because of my aunt. She would pick me up for church every Sunday, every Wednesday. Anytime the doors of the church were open, um, she would make sure that if I wanted to be there, I could be there. She went to all of the events with us. She would go to Falls Creek and she would cook and she would take us to um, things like YEC and Dawson McAllister. And she just made sure that she was pouring into us um, constantly, not just me, not just my sisters, but my friends also. Um, and she was just teaching us how to be a godly woman um, and, you know, how, what decisions needed to be made and, and she would help guide us on that. And even now that she's not with us, she passed away about a year ago. I find myself saying, would my aunt walk that way? Would she make that decision? Um, and so, you know, it's someone earthly that I can look at how they lived their life. I've experienced it. And I know that what she did was almost always the right thing because she thought long and hard about it. Um, and so, you know, I always look back at her life and she, you know, she was a missionary for her entire life. That was her job, um, in different aspects. And she looked at all of her life as a, as a mission field and she lived that out. And that's the way I want to live my life out. Um, one more verse that I want to leave you with is, um, it's in Hebrews, it's Hebrews 13, seven. It says, remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you 
consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. So when we're looking for those people that we want to put up on a pedestal, um, it needs to be those people who are living out the Christian life, those people that are living the way that Jesus um, asked us to live. There are so many people that in this world that are put up on pedestals, you know, athletes and celebrities, and they don't deserve to be there. They aren't living the life that we should be emulating. And so when you're trying to find someone to emulate, I think that we really need to go to the Bible to figure out who we need to be putting up on that pedestal. Okay. So Carrie's hero was her aunt. Uh, for a second there, I thought it was going to be me, and that would have been really <laughs> awkward with me sitting right here. So thank you for choosing your aunt. Uh, Jason, what do you have? Yeah, I'd just start off. My my earthly hero, I guess, is my father, um, and I have a few heroes in my life, you know, on this on the earth. But uh, I'd say overall, my dad, um, just because of his his wisdom and uh, and his love, unconditional love, and uh, I'm thankful for that. I always think of think what would my dad do in this situation. Um, and I could go on and on about that, but um, one of the biggest things that he taught us kids, uh, my brother and sister and myself, is that he's he's only human. You know, he, he makes mistakes, but he always taught us to look at the real hero, and that's God. And he, uh, he, he set that example in his life and his words and his actions. And so uh, it would be my dad. Now, I want to look at God and uh, how ultimately he's, he's our, should be our hero, number one at the top of the list for all kinds of reasons. When you think about uh, Batman and Superman and, and Spider-Man and all the heroes, uh, even Iron Man, uh, they all have a certain way that you contact them. They all have a certain way that you call out to them. Like Superman, he had great hearing, so he could hear things. Um, Batman, we all know how Batman, you know, was called. They had the big spotlight logo in the in the sky. Um, but all throughout the Bible, there are promises uh, it, that encourage us that God's going to be a hero to us, and He's willing. He wants to be the hero in every aspect of our life. And here's the cool thing. The way that we call out to him is just one-to-one. -one. We can just call his name and he's there. Uh, in every, in every uh, chapter of our lives, we face troubles and, and, and hardships and things. And all we have to do is call on him. And one of the verses that stuck out to me when Curtis earlier said uh, our topic this morning is heroes. There's a verse in Psalm. It's Psalm 50, 15. It says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. That is like the ultimate hero uh, verse. I mean, uh, that beats Batman and Superman and all all the mans put together. Um, he is there to be a hero with our adver in, with our adversaries. When we have fear, he's there to be a hero by taking that fear away. Um, he is there to provide needs for us um, and be a hero in that way. And uh, especially when we're faced with temptations, we call upon him to be our hero and take the, those temptations away. So um, the earthly hero is my dad, no question. Um, but ultimately, God is, is uh, it should be our hero. Yeah, and you know, when we look at heroes, one of the things that, that makes people heroic is they're willing to die for people. And we see that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. He died to pay the wages of our sins. Uh, so he's our ultimate hero. He's our savior. Uh, but, uh, you know, today as we think about our earthly heroes, uh, if you have one of those earthly heroes and they're uh, still around on this earth, I just encourage you to maybe get a hold of them, call them, Text them whatever it is and just let them know how much you appreciate uh, the godly influence they've been in your life. That, that'll uh, be big for them, and, and it's also big for us when we do that. And then to think about the people that you have influence over. Would you be considered a godly hero in their lives? Uh, that's all we have for today. You guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.